Hello and welcome to episode zero of Code Slice. Um, basically, this is going to serve as my pilot episode to figure out what things I like, what I don't like, and what I can do better. But the focus of this episode is I'm going to be working on my text box UI element. It's going to take you from beginning to end. Right now, that class does not exist. I have my UI folder here, and uh, I've got my user interface, which contains widgets, and you know each of these various things extends widgets. So I have like a button and a label. A label is just kind of a static picture that just sits there. Button obviously, you know, changes its look and state based on when you hover and click and that kind of stuff. But I need a text box. Um, the difference between a text box and a label is that a label, like I said, is just a static image, and I have to have the image pre-built before the, you know, the game even runs. But a text box is where you create dynamic text, where I specify a string, a custom string, and it creates that text on the fly. And to accomplish that, I'm obviously going to be using STL TTF because I'm using primarily SDL libraries for this uh, game engine. So, um, before we do that, I need to come down here. I had an old font class. Um, I will still use this. I'm just making sure it's what I need. Um, because one thing I needed to fix is I need to find where I specify the text. And uh, where I. Oh, did I get rid of that? Huh, it may not even be here anymore. So, I'll need to fix this font class. Because one of the other things I did in, on the old one was I made it so. Um, you had to like pre-specify the color or something. Let's see, where is it? Right here. Aha! I hard-coded it. Even worse. So you come in, you specify which font you're using, and then you specify the text, and then it'll go through and create the text for you um, and make it into this image. So I need to tweak this first. Um, and so in order to do that, I need to make it so it can accept a color rather than just um, force you to take, in this case, white. I just used white and just kind of said nothing else counts. So let me back up here a second and uh, let's change load text to accept three colors. Let's see, what are the three colors types it takes? It takes an SDL color. Um, well, I need to see what it takes. Sure, I'll take either one. Those are uint eights. Okay, so I will just accept uint eight for now, and I won't even bother with the alpha because it's really not going to help me in this case. So, uint eight red, uint eight green. Got to obey my eighty character limit. Uint eight red, green, and blue. Oops. Come down here, grab those, tweak this, fix my commas. Okay, so now we accept. Do I still build? Probably gonna see if I use. I'm pretty sure I don't use text good it builds because I don't use this text function in any of my code yet, so I safely changed it without breaking any existing code. So. I come in here and I'll change this to be the red, the green, and the blue. And heck, while we're at it, since I don't mind using white as a default, I'll just come and give these um, default values. So if I want to be lazy, I can just say, hey, use white. I don't, I don't want to type all these in. There we go. So it takes a red, green, and blue, and it defaults to white. So it puts that into the appropriate struct and then renders using the SDL function. Okay, well that was an easy fix. So now I can specify color as I please. So now that they have the ability to take my text and blit it onto an image, let's get going on the actual widget. Come in here. Let's see. I want a new class. I like the code blocks template tool I have here. It's I don't use all the features, I just use the basic shell to get a class up and running, but it's really quite handy. Oh, wrong project. That's the problem. No, cancel. Activate. This is going in the Cyborg's game engine, not in Paroxysm specifically, because this is a game engine tool. We come in here. Oh, wrong way. CGE, UI. I want it in the UI folder. Um, I want them both in the same folder. I don't separate them out. And this will be text box. 
don't know why I call it text box, but I do. It's cool. Huzzah. Uh, yes, yes. Add it to everything. Get rid of these comments. Let's see. And then the first thing I have to do is move it into my namespace. guys put that in my namespace indent and here we go okay so is my text box it's a widget it's gonna be a widget it has to be a widget because it has to do special things publicly implemented okay So, um, one of the things it has to be able to do is set the text on the fly, you know, because this is one of those things that can change. I have to be able to get a pointer to the widget and be able to say, hey, change your text. So, we're going to come down here and we're going to say void set text. I have my incoming text. Um... My incoming colors and that reminds me I didn't do my naming conventions correctly <laughs> that's important to me I get nervous when I record I make mistakes in red and green and blue and that's gonna break this I have to come fix these In case you haven't noticed, I'm not a fan of Hungarian notation. I don't like prefixing by type. To me, that has no meaning, and it's like, if you don't know the type of a variable, you shouldn't be touching it anyway. Um, I like contextual uh, prefixes. In this case, in means it's, it's a parameter, so I can always see in the code I'm using various parameters um, that I know that they are parameters. What? Ah, we bumped a key. Still build? No, it doesn't. Um, oh, this is my new stuff. My old stuff did compile. Um, let's see. I need graphics. That's my generic OpenGL SDL includer thing. Compiling. And there it compiles. It's fine now. Okay, so let me fix my style. Uh, once again, Allow it to default to all uh, white, so I can be lazy during testing. Okay, defaults to white. Um, let's come in here and create the function. Void text box. Set text. Const in text. You int eight in red. You int eight. In green, it's red, green, blue, right? That's right, okay. Red, green, blue. Okay, so we have everything we need to make text. So, um, in here, I do need my image class. I'm inside the UI folder, so it needs to be, you know, up, up a folder. Inside here, I can make my image um text image just leave it default implement uh, construction um do 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 what am i trying to do again i completely forgot oh load text okay gotcha oh it's so f i need a font i forgot my font I'll skip that Take the internal text, and hey, didn't do the right right auto complete. Is it just forgotten? Make sure it still runs. Okay, it builds. But why did it do my wrong auto complete? Code blocks are fired. Um, yeah, they're fine. I just I just slowed updated. It. It'll get to it later. Okay, so I need a font first. Forgot about my font. 
Um, see, there's a couple of different directions I can go here. I can say this text box must always use the same font, or I can say um, you can specify the font every single time. And I don't really think I want to specify every single time, so I'm going to make it accept one. I'm going to make it so that for a given text box, the font is fixed. And then you can just change the text and the color, and that's it. So let me come up here. And this is one of the areas where I'm, I'm kind of winging it. You know, I may come to regret this later. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I, I think it'll work for what I'm trying to do. So I want it to hold a font reference. Um, can it be const? I think it can be const because I yeah you construct it and then it just holds it and takes care of it. So yes, I'll just make it const. It doesn't need to change it or do anything with it. So so m font. And then I need to, oh I just need to accept one. Constant of course. have to take a font. Um, I guess I'm, I'm choosing to do it this way also is uh, so that I can specify load one font once and pass it to multiple text boxes and reuse it because you know I mean I don't want each one loading its individual font redundantly and that'd be kind of silly so um, load the font map the font my initializer list there it goes no compiler errors fantastic um, and yeah, if you've probably gathered already, I like to compile often and throughout the process because I don't want to get to a, a far, you know, deep into the process of development and realize, oh, what I've been doing doesn't even build because I forgot a namespace or I've been using misspelling a name or something like that. So build early and build often. I mean, even if you're not going to run it, just build and just see if your changes are okay. Um, obviously, that becomes impractical if you're changing a header file and that propagates through all your files and causes a massive recompile and then maybe it's not the best idea. So just kind of guess take that advice with a grain of salt. Anyway, so we come in here, we load our text. Now I can load it with uh, the M font. Good, it compiles. He's complaining to me about, he's like, you haven't specified what you want to run because I'm compiling a library only and there's no uh, app as associated with this yet. So, okay, so we load it up. We got our red, green, and blue and our font and it loads it up into the image. So that much is done. So let's come take a look real quick at widget. I need to remember what my um, stuff is. That's right. I need a I need a display function. So in order to be a widget, it has to be able to display itself. So I come in here. Let's uh, define that because widgets are visible by definition. Uh, text box display no not disable display me I get I keep these in the same order so I don't confuse myself okay so it can display itself um, I need to specify a couple of properties about itself I know I have to specify its x its y position those are the centers and then its radius x and radius y those are bit kind of like the width divided by two and the height divided by two kind of works from the whole operate from the center kind of concept with my widgets. So I have to specify mx, my, m radius x, m radius y. So for the sake of nonsensical testing, I'm just going to come in here and say well, I'm going to leave x and y, excuse me, at the center, um, and I'm going to make the width. It's going to radiate out. Oh, let's say two. And it's gonna be only that much tall. This is gonna make the text look screwy, but that doesn't matter yet because I'm just trying to get it working first. And then I'll come back and make it auto calculate the correct details and whatnot. So, back down here in my set text, after I've loaded the text, um, this is basically loaded into an SDL surface, into an image. It's ready to be put into a texture. So, let me back up a second. I need a texture. It's an OpenGL Texture 2D. Texture 2D. 
Master 2D. Okay, so now I got my texture. Load image. Text image. Boom. That was easy. That's why I love object oriented programming. You don't have to think about stuff, you just use it. Okay, so now that I've loaded my image into a texture in OpenGL, um, I can use that for displaying. Let's come in here. Texture. Bind. Oops. Auto parentheses. Excuse me. So I bind the texture. Now I need to re render the quad. And this is kind of where I just cheat and go back and look at what I did for my button class. I just want to see what did I do. Oh, and it looks like here. Yeah, I, I set up the VBO. Um, and just loaded it up. And prepped it for use. So I'm going to do that. Um, let's see. I'm going to copy all this. Um, put that in the same place in my constructor. Oh, that's a good place for it. And I need to make sure I have an MVBO. I need to see what type that is. It's my interleave VBO. I'll go ahead and just copy that. Okay, compile. Probably get some errors. Yeah, it doesn't recognize it. I need to include it. Interlead VBO is an OpenGL tool. Okay. Um, set position does not declare. Is that a button only thing? Probably. It is. Okay. Yeah, I don't need that. Get out. Compile. And so far, so good. We're good. Okay. But I need to change a couple things because the button loaded up four unique states. And I don't need that. I just need four. Period. Because I only need the four corners of my box. Um, so I don't need four states of four vertices. I just need four vertices of X, Y, and S, T. Um, and I probably don't even need this for loop because, again, this for loop was here to do these offsets. So, yeah, I can get rid of this for loop. Come out here, bring it outside the loop. I don't know why I just didn't delete the for loop. You just, you do crazy things when you're recording. I don't know, you just... You just act differently. I'm sorry. I'll be better next time. Okay, so I come in here, and instead of being TCY, which is a fancy variable for calculating the states um, in the buttons, TCY, I'm setting the, all the various coordinates. So. Um, if you haven't can't tell already, this is an interleaved VBO. It's a single array that contains both the vertices and the texture coordinates. So that's why I, you know, I have a pointer here, and I start at the beginning of this array I made, and I say, plug in the x, the y, the s, and the t. The s and t are the texture coordinates. So I do, you know, each vertex is a bundle of a vertex and a texture coordinate. So there's one, two, three, four. So there's my four corners. So I've set my radius x, my radius y, and then I've created it, prepped it for rendering. Now I don't need four times four vertices, I only need four vertices. Because uh, my interleave VBO object auto detects, you know, how big each vertex is, how many, you know, data points it is, how many bytes they are. So I only need to specify that, oh, I only have four vertices that are each of these blocks. It's all pretty cool. Just check it out. Again, it's open source. You can check out the uh, Cyborg's Game Engine stuff online at GitHub. So here we go. So we come in here, and we're ready to display it. Let's say display. I need my autocomplete. Oh, that's right. It's the GL uh, draw arrays stuff, basically. So I come in here, and I say GL triangle fan. Uh, the first one is 0, and there's only 4. Um, you should probably know that in OpenGL 3, GL quad was deprecated. And even though I'm not technically using OpenGL 3 in this engine, I'm trying to, you know, focus on, you know, using OpenGL rules and API stuff. So I'm avoiding using it. But th this is the cool thing is you can get around it by just doing a, a GL triangle fan because it makes it so that the same four coordinates will draw a, cro a quad. A crod. I don't know what that is. So I can display it. I can load it. Um, I think we're good. 
let's see if it works. Let's come up here to Paroxysm. Activate the project. Um, I'm going to go to the main menu, because that's a perfect place to muck up the code. Let's see. Main menu. Right here. So I include all these UI elements. I'm going to copy that. Uh, include a new one. Text box. Going to come down here. Where's all my member variables? Oh, they're local. That's right, because the, the UI takes care of them. Come in here. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum. Main menu module. Here's where I create it. On load. This is where I create all the widgets and load them up. So I come in here and I say, come in here, text box. Text box equals new. CG text box. Um, oh, I need a font. Good call. So I am going to store that here. So I come down here. Let's say right here, CGE font, M font. So I can come in here and say M font. Text box, set, text. Hello world. Best way to test any code anywhere. And we'll leave it white because that's why I did that. So I can be lazy. I can change the colors later if I want to. After I've done that, I go to my UI object, add text. Ah, text box. Okay, I need to load my font first though. M font dot. Oh, probably in the constructor. You can you can tell it's been a while since I've used that particular class. Um, yep, I need to specify the file and the size right in the right off the bat. So let me come back here to main module. Come to the top. I've got to specify M font. Um, data, I don't know what I call it, let's find out real quick. Let's see. I go to my projects, paroxysm, data. Hmm. Let me go find it really quick. It's probably in my old stuff. Actually, let me come back here. Yeah, it's in assets. I need to just move it under miscellaneous. Let me just copy that folder. Actually, I'm going to cut that folder. Come over here to data, paste it here, and make it more logical. Let's make it fonts. So data, fonts, deja vu sans. That's what we want. Okay. So let me try that again. So I'm going to data, fonts, deja vu sans. Oh, and the size. Let's say 16. That's a good size. Okay, uh, let's try running it. See what happens. See if it explodes. See what mistakes I made. We'll find out real quickly. Um, error class user interface has no member add. Oh, it's because it's add widget. I don't even pay attention to the code that's in the surrounding area. Okay. Oh, and look at that! Hello world! Right smack dab in the middle of my UI. Just like I did. So, I'm going to leave it at that. You saw me create the class from scratch. Um, I'll put off making it better, and by better I mean it has to like read, you know, read the size of the of the image and load it correctly and uh, make it, you know, not stretch it because it's a little blurry here. But I got it working, you know, at a fundamental level it's working, and I'm really proud of myself for doing it on the first shot. So, thanks for watching, and uh, hope to see you next time.